Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Kitchen Table Meta. In today's episode, I have an interview with the lead designer of the Chrono Clash system, Mr. Ryan Miller. Now, I had a chance to sit down with him at the Origins Game Fair, and I wanted to do something a little different than just a standard interview, and I wanted to play three games of the Chrono Clash system, the Naruto Borto version of that system, with Ryan Miller. Now, keep in mind, this was pre-development footage, so this was um, the rules are a little different then, but don't worry, I had you covered. I made an entire rules document with all the questions and every single rule that I could think of revamped and uh, explained. I also took all the cards and put them in text version for you. So if you're not sure what a card does, head over to that uh, spreadsheet. You can see everything about that. Now, I do have the link to that in the description and I will be updating that periodically throughout the week. So if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the description um, below and I'll do my best to update the sheet and answer any questions you guys have. Also keep in mind, since this is a little outdated, I did have a chance to talk with Ryan uh, before posting these videos and we'll be doing an updated, more traditional interview for you guys. So what I want you to do, if you have time, is in the description below, if you have a question for Ryan, just list your question and then I'll be bringing your name up and your question up in the next interview videos. Uh, so that he can see your question and we'll answer your question. And the person who has the best question, uh, which will be chosen by Ryan, uh, will have a really special little gift that I'll show you guys uh, at the end of the uh, third video of this series. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Again, if you have any questions at all, let me know. And thank you so, so much for watching. All right, guys, so I'm here with Mr. Ryan Miller, the uh, lead designer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, designer of the yeah, designer yeah. of uh, the Naruto Borto card game, and honestly, just the Chrono Clash system all together. And I think that's something that I really want to clear up before we even get started. Is I think a lot of people are seeing this game as a Naruto Borto card game, and honestly, it's it's the Chrono Clash system. So while I get yes. shuffled up and uh, stack my deck, can you uh, maybe talk a little bit about the Chrono Clash system and, and how it's its own system? Yeah. So the basic system you see here, uh, we're actually using on a couple of more worlds. Uh, in fact, we've already announced Godzilla, uh, which I believe is due in September, but don't quote me on that. Um, and eventually there are more in the works that I can't talk about yet, but are some very exciting IPs. I mean, if you know Bondi, you know that they have a ton of great properties. And uh, yeah, there's some that I'm already working on that are going to be pretty sweet. So, so yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're just going to you know, showcase a couple of decks. Basically, we're just going to be uh, talking about the game. We thought it'd be more fun to play a couple games so he can wreck me uh, while we're talking yeah. about the game uh, before, you know, instead of just setting up doing a traditional interview here. So uh, we do have something pretty cool. So I want to talk about this just very briefly, guys. This is the Naruto Borto uh, card game tournament packs. Now, you get two of these for buying the game, which is super cool, but also your local game stores will have these. Any kind of tournaments uh, will have these there. And what these are is every card in this game can be foiled and you get one of those cards in this pack, including these big EX cards. But obviously it's a smaller size. Small unless version, they did yeah. some weird folding or something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh, it's- no. no uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's super cool. I love these things. Uh, I've been collecting them like all week. I think it's super, super yeah. neat. Uh, so what we're gonna do is instead of rolling a dice to see who goes first, we're just gonna open up these packs, compare strength of the card, and whoever has the highest uh, uh, strength will go first. Well, it should be cost, because it might be an action card, right? So we oh, should do true. cost. That's, well, just yeah. throwing it out there. No, that's what, we were doing strength, and if you drew an extra card, it was like a zero, you just got blank oh, out. But okay, actually, let's like, do, no, the, like, the cost makes okay, more sense. It's okay. more fair that way. <laughs> just if we tie, we're yeah, in yeah. trouble. Okay, that's true. All right, uh, and then the right. winner gets both of these cards. Yeah, the winner of the game oh, okay. will get both of the cards. So Ryan will be walking away with uh, oh, quite a few cards here. Oh man, I want to bend the card. There we go, there we go. So, I know this. Why are you so good at this? I feel like Charlie decide? in the Chocolate Factory. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. Ready? Right. Ready? One, One, two, three, three. four, two. two. Oh. So I go first, and we'll put these somewhere where yeah. they put will be here. the prize of the game. So I'll oh, take right. the first turn. Nice. Uh, so, guys, in case you guys know how this works, um, really, really fun game. Uh, I'll let's. Uh, Ryan talk a little bit about the Chrono Gauge uh, system here as we play, but um, essentially your Guardian stack here is your life. You have five life. Uh, you start with five cards in your hand, no mulligan, um, and uh, you can play your cards with a really unique uh, system that I'm going to let Ryan introduce a little bit here while I uh, stall for time yeah. while I'm shuffling. <laughs> no worries. So so uh, basically, um, when it's your turn, it's your turn as long as you're, the piece is on your side of the Chrono Gauge here. And the Chrono Gauge goes from 10 to 0 to 10 right over here. Whenever you pay a cost, 
You're gonna move this special piece that we, some sort of <laughs> this definitely not a camera. Yeah, definitely not camera gear here. And move the special piece. That many spaces. So if I were to uh, play uh, Haku, cost three, I would move it three spaces towards my opponent's side of the chrono gauge. Now, once it get the piece gets to their one or higher, your turn is over, right? So what that means is I could, if I wanted to, drop a ten drop and go wah like that. Uh, but then that would give my opponent so much extra time, and Dusty would use all that time to just blah, 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 play all this stuff, and next thing you know, Max. So you can play anything you want. Uh, there are just times when you really have to think about it. So what, uh, it adds a lot of strategy because your entire hand is an option. It's just how you want to play those cards. So now that I've already tipped my hand, he knows what's in my hand. Yeah, all right, guys, I might as well just take the cards right now. That's easy. That's, that's going to be easy. Uh, so I am going to uh, start off, and yeah, I'll play Haku for three. Um, one of my uh, one of my favorite cards is a three. He has two strength. He has leader two, and that means when I attack with him, the next creature I summon this turn, next battler I summon this turn, um, sorry, yeah, that way, uh, will cost two less. So I can't do anything now. It's not my turn. And even if it was, uh, battlers, the first turn you summon them can't do anything. Yeah, so. somebody, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So. Draw a card. All right. So I'm going to play... Um, an ability card, which is really cool. So these aren't battlers uh, like Ryan played, but what they allow you to do is get a, a really strong ah. effect, and then they um, and then they go away. So what this does is allow me to gain five times. So it costs three to play, and then I gain five. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. That gain of two. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, what's neat about this card is uh, if it was here, for example, and it went to his turn, I would still gain back and continue to play. Yeah, you don't check for the end of the turn until the card is done doing its thing. So he's at five time, which is really scary to me. Yes. Exactly what we want to play here. There's some good ones. All right, we're going to play out a big guy here. We're going to play out Naruto. Seven, seven. all right, not bad. Four, five, six. That's seven. kind of one of the fun things about this game is, is, is learning how much time to give your opponent and when is that risky, right. when is that safer. It's a really neat, uh, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I would say the designer who, who made it was a, a pretty, pretty okay. <laughs> All right, I will now attack your Guardian stack. So whenever you attack with a Battler, you must choose either a tapped Battler or their Guardian stack. I'm gonna attack their Guardian stack. Uh, Dusty's gonna reveal the top part of his Guardian stack. If it has a Guardian ability, which this one does, he'll play that now, which that, oh geez. That's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. That allows him to draw one of his EX cards. Oh no, so you get to do that right now. And then we're gonna compare strengths of the two Battlers. Minus strength two, strength two, that would mean that uh, when they're tied, they both lose, and they both would go away. No matter what, the Guardian's going to go away. So even if you lose your attacker, uh, you at least ding them for one of their Guardians. So this yeah. Way. yeah, this is like the defense mechanic. It allows yeah. me to, you know, he can't just beat me up with that one guy. Now yeah. he has to still play stuff. Yeah. So um, now my leader still triggered, though. So I still, the next battle I summon this turn costs two less. And I will summon my own Naruto Uzumaki, but a different version. This one... Uh, cost five strength, or I'm sorry, cost five, uh, minus two, so it's only gonna cost me three. One, two, three. Um, summon, draw one of my own EX cards. Okay, it's rigged. That's I fine. got this big fella here. And I really like EX cards because they're so big that when you hold them in your hand, they're really intimidating. Like, yeah. look at that, it's like, and then when you actually play them, they make a, a breeze waft across to your right. opponent. Really yeah, you mess up your board a little bit, that's frustrating. Now this guy has uh, Sentinel, and Sentinel allows me to tap him when I play him, and while he's tapped, uh, my opponent cannot attack my Guardian stack. So they have to deal with the Sentinel. As long as it's tapped, they have to deal with the Sentinel first before they can attack that. So go ahead, Dusty. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's see what so here, I think we're going to make a pretty easy play. We're going to play out Sakura. Uh, she costs four. Oh, no. And it's uh, one, <laughs> two, three, four. But she has this really cool ability that allows me to choose <laughs> a battle card Jerk. with Sentinel and, uh, and destroy. Is it destroy it? Destroy KO it. it. Yeah, it's it's gone. So uh, long. Make it go away. Um, so that's it what we do. So close. Now, what I could have done there is I could have attacked with this guy before I played this. Yeah. However, when I attack with Naruto, he gets minus two time. So I would have passed it back to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I wasn't able to do that. Yeah. So now it's my turn since the Chrono Gauge is over this way. And we're going to keep on going. Boy, that was a beating. Oh, well, shoot. Let's see. Uh, you know, I'll teach you how to play. Don't worry. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> yes. All right. So he uh, can't attack at all. My other guys, which I don't have any, can't be the target of his abilities. But if he's destroyed, I get to draw yet another EX card. Da, da, da. Go ahead. 
<laughs> so, return. And we are going to attack with Sector. It's here, right? All right. Okay, so I can, uh, so I have to choose one of my guys, put him in my hand, and I draw two cards. Okay. So, kind of bad for me, but I get two more cards out of my which hand. Is, well, which is... And this uh, was an action card, uh, so it doesn't, it so doesn't his fight. attacker lives. Yeah. All right. Now I have tons of cards, but nobody can play. <laughs> Whoa, why aren't you swinging with Naruto? Are you trying not to beat me? Well, because of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He loses this two yeah. times, yeah. Yeah. This is, He's tough guy to swing with. You keep putting me in a bad situation <laughs> here. And now that you've said right. that, I feel like it's not on purpose. Oh, it's totally me. on purpose. <laughs> Silence, you. I just want to get my EX card out. No, I forbid it. Apparently. All right. Oh, jeez. That's no good. Well, you know what? I don't have a ton of good Even all these cards. I, okay, you know what? All right, here we go. Uh, now, see, now you've got the time you oh, want there. No. Um, he can't attack Balor. So this guy can't attack these guys, but he does really good attacking yeah, Guardians. Plus he gives you that minus three, too. Which yeah, is, the leader minus three is pretty awesome. Very, very good. All right, let's see what we can get here. Okay, so I think first things first, we are going to do... Leader was fun to design. I really like how it turned out. Yeah, it's it's my favorite mechanic. It, yeah, it really is. I like, I like it in recovery, too, which we yeah, are about to talk about, too. Ah, uh, I gained two time. Nah, nah. Oh, no. Oh, no. You can still attack. Yeah, I can still. Right. I can still. I and, like, but this is, not, again, it's not. It's an action card, so your your battler lives. All right. So you're down to how much in your guardian stack? I have three, three cards in my guardian right. stack there. So I'm still feeling all right. All right. So we're going to go. Yeah. Oop. All right, double. So you're gonna attack plus one. So you're gonna see here we get. Five, so yeah, no. All right, and he's got guardian attack plus one. So he gets to attack another guy, and I get two times. No, Woo! what? But I can still stand this, right? You still Obviously. do that, and it's still your turn because it's at zero. It oh, you're right. I mean, you know, never mind. I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, uh, so right. I think. Did you just summon this one? Dude, this turn? Yeah, this one. Oh, okay, so I'm not gonna lose this turn. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll attack here. All right, let's see. Oh, I gain a guardian. <laughs> Look at that. So oh, what nice. I was like, I, I summoned Slasher. <laughs> uh, <No. laughs> all right, so no. we'll, we'll go uh, four, five, six. Oh, geez, and here comes the first EX card game. Now, you notice he paid for this guy a little differently. Um, you pay for EX cards by discarding non-EX battlers that, whose total cost is at least as high as this guy. So it's kind of cool because yeah, you have to you have to discard guys in play, but the time the chronometer doesn't move, so it's still his turn. And uh, all the uh, EX battlers have fast, which means they can attack as soon as you drop them out, which in this case is right now. <laughs> but he also has a summon ability. Yeah, it's plus three times. So oh, one, two, three. This is terrible for me. You're about to. Oh jeez, this get, is just awful. Get Rex, easiest game of my life. Uh, all right. right here. <laughs> so uh, my other guys gain. <laughs> My other guy's gained Sentinel. Unfortunately, he's tapped. He's untapped. So Sentinel doesn't do anything here. He's also a nine strength guy, though. So guess what? Yeah, get my big guy. <laughs> now, he still goes to the, to the discard pile, right? Yeah, he does like, go to yeah, the discard that's, pile. That's really cool. So now you've got a discard pile that is uh, multi-sized there, multi-tiered, as it were. All right. So, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, gang, because all he has to do to win is attack me one more time, and then I uh, hang my head in shame as the designer of this game. Now I got to say, <laughs> as a designer of a game, if I'm winning, I'm worried because I think that. Usually, I, I I I play my own games, and I'm thinking about all these fun things I can do. Where you're just thinking to win, right? Right, right. So if I win the game, thinking about all the fun things I can do, and you're thinking to win, then that tells me that maybe I've done something wrong, right? <laughs> so it's actually kind of concerning if I if I tend to win my own game. Whoa. So it doesn't bother me that much. Okay. Well, I think as I'm finding out uh, which way I want to kill you, I have multiple ways <laughs> to do it. Um, yeah. what you tell, what's the biggest challenge as a designer making a game, especially a game like this that has no text? Like, what was the well, biggest? Well, this one challenge? was definitely. I mean, I've been working in trading card games for nearly 20 years now. I worked at Wizards R&D for a long time, worked on some other trading card games. Um, they're a lot of fun to design. They're also very challenging because what you really want with the game design itself, just the bare rules, is a skeleton that you can hang a bunch of meat on, right? Okay. And the meat, of course, are the cards and cards abilities and all these, all these other cool things. 
And the meet, I guess, will be the design space, what we call the design space. And the design space is just all the places you can, all the different types of design cards you can do. And generally, the, the simpler a game, the smaller its design space, more complex the design space tends to go. Not always. Okay, what are you doing? You killing I, me here? No, I just oh, you got it. Yeah. Oh, that's even harder. Okay. So, um, so that's the challenge. And uh, with and and trading card games also have the challenge of you, you're going to release more cards for them. And so, whatever skeleton you make has got to be really robust and really uh, you know support a lot of that because otherwise you end up having to add a lot of complexity to the game. I did this with Duel Masters. When I worked on Duel Masters uh, for the uh, Japan market, we often, because that's a really good game, but it's also a very bare bones system, we had to add n new card types and new card types with their own rules so that we could add more design space going forward. Because still the game's still going strong. I mean, that game is... Duel Masters was it's still a monster. The first card game I ever played. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with this game, we had the added uh, complexity of, of the uh, symbols. Uh, Bondi wants this to be a worldwide game. I know they're launching it in North America and uh, Europe. I think shortly after North America, uh, but I think I think they've got plans for more world domination after that. Right. And so what they want Take was a game that world. anybody could sit down and play. Like I could go to Japan and play this with a Japanese player, and we could totally play the game and not worry about. It. You know, that to me is pretty awesome. But it was definitely a challenge. And so what I tried to do is a, a mix of a programming language. Uh, so that as you're reading the icons saying, when this happens, do the, you know, target this type of thing, do this, and a mix of what I would call keyworded abilities, which are these these icons that just straight up refer to some rules in the game. Like Sentinel and... Yeah, yeah, our yeah, leader. leader. Um, or me about to die, because I, I do not have an answer to... See, I'm going to have to swing... I can definitely take care of Gara there, but I... You're Naruto. I, I don't see how I'm going to do anything. So... So it was a challenge. And I would say, like, I was worried about the icons, and they definitely take a little getting used to what I've noticed. And I think, this you mentioned this too, after you teach somebody the game, after their first game, like their second game, you're already kind of like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, it's, yeah, you kind of have to refer back a couple times, but it's not like you have to memorize all the icons right off the bat right. to play. Well, it just takes a little getting used to I'll it. say a couple things that you did well is, is you know, the the, the, the icons are, are pretty color specific. Yeah. So if yeah. you start out like blue, green, you're only going to have a, a a finite amount of yeah, icons yeah. you're going to run into. Yeah. Also, they're very intuitive. Like that's, that's what. Yeah, and, that, that, and that was mostly uh, Bondi's graphic design department. I kind of sent them ideas. I had done my own kind of like here's my lame like attempt at graphic design, but <laughs> but it's also what we call user interface or UI, right? Is it what you see that in the digital world? It, it's all about the UI, and that's exactly what this is. This is the UI of the cards, and it's very important that these convey something, and they do help with that kind of. You know, uh, intuitive use of the cards. What does this mean? What's this trying to say to me? And so we worked really hard on trying to get a icon set that did that, given the amount of icons that we had to put in there. And I'm really just stalling. Oh no, I'm not stalling. Actually, I have a thing I can do. See, there you go. So I'm going to ping uh, you. Okay. Six beats three. So you're out. Oh no, I can't. Oh, he has a battler. I mean, read the card. He cannot attack battler. So I am even more worse off than I was before. So you know what? I'm and I can't. This guy is actually kind of worthless because he can't attack battlers. But while he's tapped, I can't attack your guardian. So this guy's gonna well, take true. a little <laughs> vacation over here, right, right. and he's gonna say, "I'm no good." So what I might he's kind of doing a little sh that he's like, "Don't talk about how bad I am right now." What I should do then, what I really should do, is actually just do this and take Gara out, and we're gonna have a little Gara on Gara. Oh, bam! Since he's got fast, uh, he also has Sentinel. Uh oh, uh, and he's got Sentinel. So I'm gonna swing in, hit your uh, three with my five. Uh -huh. Boom! You're out of there. Uh, and then Team 7 comes in and says, Ryan, you get to play a little bit more because okay. I, that is just an action card that straight up gives me another Guardian, keeps me in the game a little bit longer. And there you go. Okay, I don't like that. So, I won't be honest. So yeah, it was, a, it was a challenge, but you know, it was super fun. I love designing trading card game style games. They're such a fun challenge and they're so fun to play. Like, you know, they're just, I love the idea of I, I make a deck, you make a deck, we sit down and we just battle. Um, so it was really a it was really a fun challenge, and I'm I'm excited to get this to see this in the hands of players like you. Like thank you. No, I mean no, no. I was pointing at the camera. Oh, like like you. <laughs> and you. Sorry, too, no, that's okay. It doesn't have to be about me. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> thank you. He's trying to take it easy on me. Uh, All right. So okay. what are you doing exactly. here? Eight, yeah. Eight, okay. Five. I'll take that. Unfortunately, I have that. nothing to. No, it kept with me. This. It kept me going. Yeah. Kept me uh, going. Suck. Um, yeah, we'll see if I can capitalize. He saw four freaking guardians. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to capitalize on this or not. So I think I'm just gonna play Haku and go one, two, three. 
Okay. All right. So I'm gonna take my time now. One of my favorite things about this game too is how back and forth it is. Yeah. yeah. It, the, the the resource system yeah, itself incentivizes that but also you know your guys don't necessarily stay around all the time like they can die here they can die yeah, from yeah. cards you play and they're just very yeah. vulnerable I was going for a very dynamic I love battling you know it's really fun to battle I don't like games where it's like I'm going to build this huge fortress and you're just going to uh -huh. have to wait right uh, and so that's also why I put uh, one of the reasons I put questing in the game so questing is kind of a neat thing so yeah, we need to talk about that so huh? questing let's say I had this guy out uh, I got him out last turn uh, instead of attacking with him, I can just quest. And what questing does is I can choose another card from my hand and put it on top of him. And this acts just like a guardian, but just for this guy. And so now you can attack this guardian. Um, and if you do, it's the same mechanic. I'll reveal it. If it's, you know, if it has a guardian effect, it'll happen. If it is a battler, they'll compare numbers. Uh, the nice thing is that since I chose this card from my hand, I pretty much know what's there. And so do you. And you're right. like, what did he put under there? Now, if he does not take care of this guy at the start of my next turn this becomes a quest point and it goes over there once i get five of these i win the game and so it's very tough to win that way it is a tough way to win but what it all, what it does do is it ensures that there will be interaction i can force you to interact with me because sure you can let that guy go if you want but now i'm that much closer to victory and and it really adds a nice uh, uh dimension to to the standard like I'm just going to beat you in the face, or I'm going to beat you guys. Right, like you I have another way to. Out, yeah, exactly. I can be like, you know what? I don't have to attack you. I'll just yeah. quest. Yeah. So now I'm trying to stall for time while I look for something that could help me win the game, and that won't do it. That won't do it. Oh jeez. All right. So, yeah, I don't have much that's going to help me here, gang. So, oh, but I do have that, and that'll at least. Yeah. So I will play. Sugetsu for two, one, two, summon. I get to draw a card, I draw an EX card, and then I have to discard two cards. Also, has Sentinel, and Sentinel allows me to tap it when I summon it. And now I am protected, Bre albeit briefly, with this little strength <laughs> one guy. Well, I have to discard. I have to discard the, you know, Kakashi here. Ta cost 10. Not probably going to get to you this game. And how about the other one? Yes, yeah, probably oh not going to get to you either. So let's go ahead and do that. Still my turn though. So I'm gonna do uh, uh, a Naruto. This guy's really cool because he makes the cards of my, uh, battlers in my hand cost one less. Oh, that's so one, cool. two, three, your turn. All right. Also these battlers too, which does have implications, but we don't need to worry about that. Oh, and I just made a huge mistake. Wow, guys. You, oh my God. I made a huge, I did not read. Would you like to go back? I was so, no, no, I, I do not want to go back. I did not even look at my EX card. Had I done that, there'd have been a really cool thing I could have done, but no, no. I, feel like I need to learn from my mistakes, Dustin. As, you know, I, as, it's funny, I do the same thing. It's the only way I'm gonna learn. Yeah, that's <laughs> pain, true. Pain is our greatest teacher, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone who's married knows that. <laughs> learn from your mistakes. Um, okay, so we're gonna go uh, Sakura, and we're gonna oh. kill this. Oh, uh, and that, is, if this doesn't save me, that will, oh, you didn't. Oh, you're right, I'm sorry. But still, you yeah. can't attack with them anyway, so at right. least that. So it's still not game. Attack here. All right, I get plus two time. My. Uh, and two strength versus two strength. Yeah. So yeah. Ryan, let me kill you. I want my Ooh. my pretty card. Okay, so drawing this. Let's see here. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, how can I deal with you? Oh, I know what I could deal with you. I can just not give you enough time to attack with him. Yep. That's how I've been dealing with him. So that, let's just keep doing that. That would be pretty so, frustrating. Uh, see, here's the risk. I could use this guy to pay the cost of my EX card. The problem, but I might want to attack first, but now I'm risking losing this guy to that Guardian. But I'm so behind that I think I want to take the risk. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and swing here. It's a super big risk, and I will hit your Guardian. I don't think I... This is probably a terrible plan, but let's see here. Oh, yeah. oh what a two times! Yes. Oh, no! <laughs> But I keep my guy, Yes. but not that it matters because... Now, he can't attack them because whenever he attacks, he costs two time, which right. means it would actually end the attack. When he, so that's, if you haven't been, if you didn't know, so this, whenever he attacks, minus two time, but he gets to untap one of his other battlers. But if if uh, an effect would change the turnover, the attack is over. So that's why he hasn't been attacking me that. If it, if it wasn't clear before, that's why. You're probably just like, he's bad. That's why so I'm like still hanging on terrible. by a razor's edge. All right, so we go. Oh no! And that'll do it right there. So see his yeah. See so now he's attacked, 
and that'll do it. You win. SD wins price. the prize cards. Here you go. That is game one. Okay, I they need are. to play again because I could have won. I could have at least put a bigger dent in had I paid attention to that last EX card I drew. So yeah, we need to. That was just embarrassing. <laughs> It was good. Lots of awesome. Ah, it wasn't ah, embarrassing. Ah, I mean, I made fun of you a little bit, and I'm sure. Yeah, well, no, it should be. Yeah, I'll, I'll, it's the only way I'll learn. Yeah, I'll learn. Some, uh, I'll learn some. Uh... <laughs> oh my god.